Okay. Sometimes, but I haven't actually been coached on it. Okay, uh, we have a video for that as well as a, a reminder video on the uh, fundamentals of passing. We'll also talk a little bit about uh, some coaching stuff. I'm not coaching, catching stuff. So let's um let's let's go quickly um, with the um, with some of the catching the kick. We'll go with catching the kick ball and some of these other unusual forms of catching. We'll quickly go over over them key points. So when we're uh, we, when we're catching, oh, sorry, I forgot to uh, put the um, share thing in again. Okay, can you see it? Yes, I can. Okay, so catching the ball. And we have all the key factors here. And we look and they're pretty much all the same things that we, we tell you. But I think we need to also um, reinforce rotating the ball, why? Or not rotating the ball, rotating the body, why? So if you don't catch it, it doesn't go forward. And then it's not a knock-on, it goes backward. Not a knock-on. Also, it's easier when you try to catch something on um, face on, what often happens if you don't actually catch it with your hands and it hits the chest will often happen. It'll just bounce off. It'll bounce off. It's easier to catch and then also to regain the catch if necessary. If you fumble up here, you can still have the ability fumble up here and it still won't be your knock on. So yes, uh, calling for the ball. What's important about calling for the ball? So that, uh, you have to put your name on it so that the, your teammates can support you. So why don't I go my ball? Because my ball could be anybody. Exactly, exactly. All right, uh, move the position, extending. You have communication, that's where we call the ball. I see here in New Zealand, they say call for my ball. <laughs> um, catch above eye level, why, why would we want to do that? So that, I don't know. All right, think about it, a couple of reasons. One, if I'm catching a, a kick ball, is it coming towards me or is it coming above me? coming from above. Okay. So what they're what, what it's saying here is if I make if I catch it down here it's more likely to to fall out. Also the lower you catch the ball, we're just talking human nature. If I'm catching and I'm looking for the ball up here, are my eyes looking around at my the opposition players? Or am I focusing no. on the ball? You're focusing on the ball. Okay, now if I catch the ball here, and I, you know, I'm still trying to get the ball to catch the ball here, where, and I, all of a sudden I see a different color jersey coming for me, am I still going to be concentrating on getting the ball to my hand, or am I going to, for however short a time, react to the opposition player coming? Probably going to react to opposition. So what's likely to happen then? Oops! You drop yeah. it, or you lose control, uh, or you're not prepared. So yeah, it's better to catch the ball above. Um, when you catch, when you jump for the ball, you remember our activation exercises? The first one we do is we jump for the ball and we bring our knee up to protect ourselves. Yeah. Why would we do that? Well, because you can't get tackled while you're in the air. Okay. And it's just safer because you're protecting your body because you're, you're opening up your body when you're trying to catch a, a, kick, a kicked ball. Okay, but why do I live? I mean, what is the, if, if I'm going for that, and I, I agree with what you're saying, as I jump, I'm stretching out my body, so I'm exposing more of my body, particularly my ribs. Why do I bring my knee up? It's basically protecting your, the rest of your body. Yeah, that's, that's, a, pretty good, that's a pretty good reason. Because like you said, I'm not supposed to be hit when I'm in the air. But if, I'm, if my leg is up and where you normally get hit, it can help uh, 
less than the impact of hitting the ground. Uh, common errors, taking the ball, eyes off the ball. Oh yeah, not side on, not calling, misjudging position. I am um, hopefully, um, especially if we go into summer sevens, uh, Mr. Otterbeck, Coach Otterbeck says uh, he'll look into seeing if he can help coach. He is a very good person at teaching some of these things like um, catching, you know, you have to position yourself when you're catching a kick ball. And that just takes practice and training. Um, and then of course, catching the ball lower. Picking up the ball from the ground, we've already talked about that. Spiral press, we've, we've talked about that. Clearing pass, we've basically snickered at that because you know, we, we, there's no real reason for you to do that. The dive pass looks good. Again, no real reason for us to do it. Lob pass. Why would, it, why would I want to do what, if I, if I look at the pictures, it looks like I'm throwing a hospital pass. Why would I want to do that? The only reason you do that is if there's no way for you to get the ball to your teammates and offload unless you throw it over someone's head. Yeah, basically to pass over the opposition. All right, pass through the tackle. That's one thing we, we really have not practiced um, this year, but I would really like next year to get a little more into it. If we train, if we train you to, um, if you're in the decision circle, prepare to go into contact, and we also train you don't pass while in contact, why wouldn't we want to train you to pass through a tackle? Well, because you've made the you've made your opponent commit, and you're taking them out of play. Oh, like you read it or said right there, read it right there, right? <laughs> but you are correct. It is a way that you can take the opposite opposition out of the play because they're now committed to you. And depending on how they're committed to you, most you know, we're all trained to coach a tackle the same way. So, you know, head at the waist. So if you're properly trained, you can still make a pass over the opposition as they're, they are tackling, and you can make an accurate pass. Um, that also takes practice because oftentimes when uh, someone's tackling and you don't have the skill sets and you have not practiced it, as you get swung around, what's likely to happen to the ball? It goes in the not the it goes forward. It goes wherever it wants to. Yeah. So when you're going in, it's still like you, you are going into contact. So your body needs to be ready. So you need to have all the attributes of a hawk. You need to have all the attributes of a power step, at least mentally to prepare for the, your body being hit. The three T's, the tongue, tongue, turtle, tummy. You still need to do that. But then you also have your arms free enough so that when the wrap occurs, you know, you're not gonna be able to pass if they wrap you and they've gotten your arms, right? So one of the reasons we do two uh, hands on the ball as you get help and you get hit at the rest, you're still able to make the pass over the opposition. Um, so uh, when we kind of have them not running to the space between the defenders, why? If I got two people at you know, two defenders there, and you know, one of the things we talk about is if you want to take the big big guy out of the play, go into contact, make him tackle you. But if you uh, believe that you're going to be able to back uh, break through two defenders, why would you want to go through the space as opposed to going to an opposition player, going right into the player? Well, you can't. It's it's you are. It's better to take them out of the play when when you get them head on because when you go from the side. It's okay. it's they have a better they're in better position to attack. Okay. Now, I didn't actually ask that. Correct. Okay. So I have two defenders in front of me, Fred and Joe. Okay. They are positioned in such a way they're not real close to each other, but they're in position in such a way that I can probably bake, break through them. Okay. So my intent is to go through them to try to make the pass. Okay. All right. Now, 
they are close enough now. I say, okay, I need to take the, one of these players out of the play. So I'm going to go through, boom, take them down, force them. His teammates going to have to be there, all kinds of things. But if I go through them, what is the advantage of me going through two relatively close defenders? Well, they are now offsides. Well, not so much offsides. Same, I'm running towards them. I'm running towards them. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm going right through them. Think about the tackling technique. Yeah, I guess it, it's harder to tackle them from they're the side. They're going to arm tackle you. Or they're going to do an upper arm. Yeah. Uh, an upper arm. They're not going to have the full shoulder head into the tackle. Or if they do, they're going to be coming at from an uncomfortable angle. So I can go through. Boom, I'm now being wrapped. I'm getting, you know, a guy's trying to take me down. I can still control the pass. Also, if I go between two guys, what is the likelihood? What is both? What are both guys likely to want to do? Tackle you. Tackle me. So if I have a support on the side that the, you know, I have a support player on either side of me. If I have two guys coming to tackle me, what, uh, what are they? All, what are the um, players on the left and right side of me? Uh, what is it likely to happen for at least one of them? They're going to be taken out of play. Did you... Well, the, yeah, the opposition will, so my teammate will be free, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, again, because you're in contact and you want to control the ball better, obviously you want to keep two hands on the ball. Okay. Uh, fall into the ground to pick up the ball. I don't think we'll do talk about that because you know what? It's video time. So let's um, we're gonna go to um, we're gonna go to the video and a couple of videos. We'll go to screen share. The videos. All right, we'll do a quick review of passing. Okay, can you see uh, it? To, uh, yep. Have you have we seen this video? I don't think so. I don't either, but I just, I want to make sure because there are sometimes we see the same video. Okay, as you're, as you're watching this, what is different in the way that he holds the ball, the way I teach you to hold the ball? Turn the ball, that's the distance from the chest. So if you turn the ball outwards, that's about as distance from over. So when you're passing the ball, that's the distance you need between your chest and the ball of passing. Keeping your elbows high, we're going to keep the simple pass without the spin. It's just two hands on the base of the ball. And as you come in, it's just... Oh, now we're now we're back to the base. That was going to be my question. And you're aiming slightly forward of uh, the person you're passing to. It's not exactly you're directing the pass to the opposing player. It's your pass is basically slightly in front, and they can come on to running onto the ball. And as you take it across, you're almost flicking the wrist. So as it comes across, you're flicking. He receives. He catches the ball in two hands and able to carry on moving the ball. Across his chest, passing on to What do you team. notice about his elbow? <coughs> They're up. His elbows are up. Uh, a little bit more accuracy and taking the lift of the ball a bit further as we move forward across the field. So the whole idea is taking the hands slightly up, shoulders up nice and high, and taking the ball. And as we move the ball, your hand starts to spin over. <coughs> allow the ball to spin. This creates speed and further distance from a normal, simple pass. So it's from this position, two hands on the ball, my shoulders are nice and high, and it's across. Same process, but I'm taking the ball higher with my hands on the higher uh, end of the ball, the mouth of the ball. With a spin pass, you can get more direction, 
full speed and accuracy on the pass. So as I step, as you see, the ball starts to spin as it releases my hands. So again, as I step, I'm releasing the step of my, my weight, on my pass foot, on my right foot, releasing my hips and allowing the ball at head, uh, elbows up, releasing the ball through. Okay, so that was the two basic fundamentals of trying to... Now, I have a problem, and hands, it's well, probably well, because he is doing this from a standing well, position. When you come to spin the ball, but if you notice, his for, when he f passes the ball, the forward foot is not is not allowing his hips to actually face his, uh, face his teammate. Now, that could be, um, that could be just a, simply a, a result of, the, you know, he's from a standing position. Not something that he would do while watching. Okay, so what did you think of that video? It's good. It was. Skip foot. It was covered the basics of you know. So is this something we should perhaps use in the future? Yeah, you could use it. Okay. Okay, this is a more of support and ball handling and the support. I actually picked it because when I was teaching, uh, one of the best ways to uh, teach is supporting, running up on, bursting on, supporting position and maintaining alignment is called the diamond drill. Have you ever heard of that? Yes, I have. So where you have a player here, a player here, and a player here. One player has yeah. the ball, runs to the front, and everyone else aligns on him. He makes a yeah. pass. And then as soon as the pass goes to that person, that person runs and everyone realigns. So they are always trying to form a, tri uh, tri form a diamond. Very good drill, not as easy as it sounds. Now apparently um, I, I uh, selected this video originally because I thought he was going to talk about the diamond drill. Uh, but it, what, what he's going to talk about is almost as good. Doc, and welcome to my coaching uh, channel. Tonight we're going to do a drill I named after professional wrestler Diamond Dallas Page. This one's called the Diamond Cutter. Do you know who this guy is? It's a support continuity and quick the wrestler. drill. What you're going to do is you're going to set up a staggered defense. You're going to have your attack line in a diamond formation. And then you're just going to have the attackers go. And they'll run into a tackle situation. And as they're getting tackled or being brought to the ground, they're going to be pop passing to their support and they're just going to work through their way through the box. So as you see, it's going to, it helps develop quick ball because the ball isn't really stopping. They're getting brought to the ground and it's popping out. All right, so if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and then please subscribe to my page. Thank you. Wouldn't you like to have a rugby field like that? Yeah. I used to play on a turf field sometimes. It was not very fun. Yeah, we actually in uh, Seattle, Magnuson Park, we have an artificial turf uh, rugby field. Not fun, not fun. No. It goes in a diamond, he passes, he passes, he passes, passes. Hmm. Now, how often, though, in the, in the drill, they're actually on their way. They have not hit contact, and they're passing while they're falling down. How often do you see that as an accurate way of passing? Not typically often. No, I'm, I mean, I'm going down. I have enough trouble because, you know, you want to also protect your body as you're going down. I always believe that. Make the quick pass once you're on the ground because you're stable and you have the ability to you know, aim and make a softer pass. Because as you're going down, you're going to want to push it hard. It's just human nature. Hit the ground, soft pass for a teammate running onto it. Because you know, a uh, pop pass from the ground, the worst thing that you can do is pass it straight hard at your teammate because it'll almost drop it. You pop it in the air so your teammate runs onto it. Academy, for you coaches out here, here's our special. Crusader training tip for the week. Today's drill. Okay, one of the things this deals with um, the offload. So I'm watching passes on offloads to learn, or videos on offloads to learn how to actually teach it. This seems like a good video for that. So I'd like your idea on it. Yeah. 
Ritchie, you'll see Ritchie, he pushes through contact, he's able to free his body through and is able to offload with a lovely little pass and again notice Ritchie's hand or his palm pointing to the sky. Here's Ritchie again testing the game line, getting back to his feet quickly, keeping the ball alive. He's able to pop a beautiful little pass here to Dave Harvilli, who again runs hard and straight out to Braden, try time. What did you think of that video? That was a good video for offload passing. Okay. I liked it. What do you think would be uh, some of the key points as, as we are uh, – when, when he was giving the – when the coach was giving the uh, discussion, he put out a couple key points. Do you remember what they were? He said you got to make sure your uh, body's – got to be able to – you're free to make the pass rather than – Okay. What about my hands? What, what was the important points that he made about the hands? I couldn't hear that part. Palm to the sky. So as I pass it, you don't want to pass it to, with your palm like this. You want to pass it so yeah. your palm is in the air so that you can actually lift the ball. You know, there'll be one of those little nuance type things. All right. Again, one of the advantages, you know, this is, I hope this is still being recorded. I can't tell. Uh, is that this? It's, yeah, it's still recording. Sorry. Okay. So it's that still recording. The, when we put this on, you know, do I have to go through all the old videos and cut out the first five minutes of me staring at the screen, mumbling <laughs> myself? Um, so I got to fix that part. Um, but uh, we'll be able to use the old videos. All the videos that I've shown you, we are not. We have recorded now, so that we know when to look at them. And you can certainly remind me about them. Okay, um, how are we doing for time? Okay. This is like the uh, graduation video on ball handling and almost everything we've taught. Except I don't think there were any kicks in this. But this is actually three minutes of multiple phase rugby. Have you seen this video before? I don't think I have. This is, this is great. So we'll watch it and uh, we'll talk about it and maybe go back and you know, look at it. Because if, if it's only you, I'm, I, um, I may not have the 40-minute limit. All right, so we ready? Yep. I'm going to start it now. I'm going to go to full screen. Now, when I had it on my computer originally, it was too fuzzy to watch. Is that... Did you see that? It's for it's kind of it's I can watch it. Yeah, it's, it's working. Okay. So, boom. Nice pass crosses him onto him. Offload. Tom goes into contact, presents. Presents the ball. Scrum half is there. Pass. Okay, fly halves almost always stand uh, still, so that's not bad there. But notice his other teammates are coming in. The passes are being made in front, well, for the most part, <laughs> in front of uh, their teammates so they can burst in the ball. Nice pass. His teammate didn't even slow down for that pass. You see that? That was beautiful. It was on a sprint. Boom, another one. Boom. Goes to ground. Boom. Goes, gets ready to pick the ball up. Pass. Keeps the ball. I like the decision making there. Again. Now, normally for us, we, you know, on our team, we teach forwards don't pick up the ball and to be scrum halves. They'll pick it up and they'll run it. Of course, you know, these are professional rugby players, so. One would assume even their forwards have fundamental passing skills. That should have been a, a card. What do you think? I don't know. It's kind of hard to see. Didn't look. It didn't look like he wrapped when he made contact.
There's our kick. Nice play on that, huh? Also notice one of the points you made in one of your first, uh, one of our first videos, is the need to be aggressive at the um, Ruck and Mall. So what did you think of that video? That was good rugby. Oh, yes, it was. So as you watch it, do you want to watch it again, but this time look at it some of, for some of the training points that we talked about in the past few weeks? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. So I am going to be quiet, and I'm going to let you be coach and say, oh, here's something that I see here, and here's something that, or you can ask questions. Can he do that? So you're going to be in charge of talking for this round, all right? Okay. We'll see, because it's sometimes kind of hard to see what's going on, because it, it like, lags up. This should be clearer. It's smaller. Come on, Coach Parker. I don't know. It's kind of it's hard to tell because because it's being sent over the Zoom. It's kind of like it just the frame rate is really low. Oh, so what I am watching. So because it's on my since it's on my computer, it looks good. But since it's being zoomed onto your computer, the Zoom yeah. date and stuff like that may be having a problem. Because it looks good. Yeah. Okay. So I only get like spurts of what's happening sometimes. When you were uh, at your old school or on your old team, did you use uh, set up a defense similar to our post monster? Yeah, we did. So, if you notice, the title of this video is Unbelievable Three Minutes of Rugby. So, you can take a look at it some other time. Just yeah, I was going to, to see Sorry. how it works, because... I was going to look at it. So like I said, um, 
When you go into multiple phases, and you're allowed to go into multiple phases, you can actually see some beautiful rugby. Yeah. Although I bet every single person out there is exhausted. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I'd be exhausted after that. Okay. So, Especially. is there anything else that we want to talk about on ball handling? Because I'm thinking next session we can talk about kicking. I'd actually like to talk about kicking more. So I think I think ball handling is good right now. Okay, I think for next session we'll do with uh, kicking, and I'll try to get um, Coach Otterbeck to come on because uh, for years he has been the best kicker consistently on the men's team, um, and he's pretty good at uh, actually teaching it. So if I can get Coach Otterbeck out here and I invite him to come talk about kicking. Um, We'll, we'll go that route. But let's say next session we'll definitely be kicking. Okay. Um, okay. Yep. Any other questions? Or any nope. other All right. Again, I don't know what's happening um, in terms of whether we're going to have a summer sevens season or not. But I still want to keep, uh, keep people engaged. Also, um, when we... Uh, when we get the protocols, uh, return to play protocols, they will be allowing you guys to uh, players to actually go out and toss the ball with each other. The problem we have is Seattle, or parts a significant part of the area that Rugby Washington is in, is still in phase one, trying to get into phase two or phase one and a half. So, like us and Shelton, for that matter. Mm -hmm who are in phase, hopefully we'll go to phase three, which enables um, groups to uh, groups of people to perform re uh, recreation together, which to me sounds like yeah. a rugby ball out and get some of your teammates and go pass the rugby ball or out and maybe recruit some. Um, just as long as you make sure you wipe down the ball and all the, all the other stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. The rugby protocols, then we'll, we'll find out what exactly they want. Because you still would have to deal with um, trying to do social distancing. Uh, probably will need to you know, wipe down the ball every time that, you know you've done some you know, routinely and quickly wipe down the ball routinely and quickly wipe down your hands stuff like that. So yeah, as soon as I, as soon as I get a word on how uh, what the expectations are, we can start talking about you guys getting out together. Um, the protocols themselves. Uh, are being mandated, or they say they mandate will be mandated at the local and local and regional authority type levels. One of the phases is yeah. where every player has their own rugby ball, and they practice together. They wipe it down, and they're in big spaces. If that's under the guidance of a coach, that could work. If it's a bunch of teenage boys together, I don't know. That, that may be a little more hard. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 We'll see that. Okay. Well, you know what? Um, I'm a. I'd say let's call it call it quits for tonight. Again, thank you for um, thank you for showing up, and I'll try to get uh, Coach Otter back to talk about kicking. Next next session. Sound like a plan? You there? Yeah. Thank you, Coach. All right. Haircut time, see? I got my haircut. You need a haircut. All right. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Bye, coach.